Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I want to tackle this uh, comics union here business from Image, but from a different perspective uh, for a moment. Um, what's here's here's my logic. Now you may not agree with my logic here. In fact, I'm, I'm sure many of you will not, and that's fair. But I'm going to just try and lay out my case or lay out my my view of how this could work or evolve. And uh, you know, there's going to be holes in what I say for sure. Uh, but I want to kind of try and walk through how I think about this, because like many things, I find myself in a weird bit of conflict with kind of all groups with this thing. I do think that there needs to be some substantive changes to the way the comic industry works and for the people who work within it, mainly the creative team, i.e. the independent contractors, the freelancers. I think some major changes are definitely needed. However, uh, the proposal that's on the table for image, it's the way I look at it is somewhere between, um, you know, not, you know, not doable, not sustainable uh, to meaningless. That's kind of how I look at, at what's there. Now, a lot of people will say and have said that, hey, you know, any attempt to make forward progress on union to give workers some rights and control is a good thing. And even if it's imperfect, it's still a step in the right direction. I'm not there. I, I don't. I don't agree, uh, because I don't believe that you know steps. You know, steps forward equal steps in the right direction. I, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think. Uh, hey, even if we get some union representation for some of the workers, even if it's a completely miserable deal, it's still good because we we got a union somehow that is that's automatically good. I. I don't. I think that. You should actually keep fighting to try and get something good, not, uh, you know, not, not, it, it just feels like a show to me. That's the problem with this image. And I've had some very angry disagreements with people over the last two weeks about this union because the perspective for a lot of people is, hey, even if this thing sucks, it's still better than nothing. You know, I think if you ever find yourself saying, hey, this sucks, but it's better than nothing, I think you're wrong. I think nothing is better. I think you shouldn't have to accept something sucks just because it's something. That's that's bizarre. Hey, uh, I uh, you know I, I have a uh, I got married to somebody who uh, cheats on me and uh, regularly spends all my money and um, you know gambles away our future, wrecks my property. But at least I'm not alone. Now nah, you're better alone, and that's <laughs> I mean, yeah, you you're better alone. Uh, that's 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 how I say. It. So. When I look at this thing with this union, I, 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 or with what comic creators need, my thought process is along the lines of what would actually be helpful to comics? What would create a more stable business, a more uh, sustainable environment for the workers within it, for the creators? And I think back to all the conversations I've had with artists and writers and editors and people in marketing and everywhere else. I think back to the various talks I've had with people. And it often comes down to, you know, forecasting, meaning some ability to see what's coming up in the future beyond, you know, a couple months, some ability to have some long-term visibility into a career, into what's happening, the ability to, you know, basically have some security into where things are going so that you know, maybe the, the worker can invest a little bit in themselves and their own skill sets and not have to worry so much about where the next paycheck is coming from, but actually have some, have some uh, you know, forward visibility into their career. Uh, to me, when I talk to a lot of creators, the thing that they often complain about is that they are given a very, very short leash of work, that uh, they're never quite sure who they're going to have to negotiate with next that you know they can't plan a long-term story or, or really anything because they don't know if you know they're going to be working there two months from now. And this isn't a worry like, hey, if I uh, get drunk and uh, take a dump on the boss's desk, I'm going to get fired. That's always going to be a concern. You, you, you shouldn't do that. But I'm talking about just generally setting somebody up for success. If you think about a, you know, another business where you're going to go in, you're going to be a software developer, for example. Imagine going to work for Amazon and you're a, you're a software engineer and you're ready to dig in and kind of learn, learn, learn the code, you know, get into the repository, see what's going on. 
And, uh, you know, but you're told, hey, we're going to evaluate whether you can work here every 30 days. So every 30 days, you may get fired unexpectedly. What would you do? Well, you'd, you'd start thinking in incredibly short term. You'd also start looking for anywhere else to go besides Amazon because, you know, you, you can't live 30 days at a time. That's not how people are wired. They want to establish roots. They want to create a network. They want to build their, you know, their, their backgrounds and their skill sets. They want to buy a house. They want to raise a family or whatever. All these things require long-term planning and insight into what's going on. So if you give people none of that, no long-term ability to focus on anything, well, then you're, you're kind of screwed. You, you, you know, you, you have nowhere to go. So the thing that I think is going to benefit writers, artists, creators, people who work in companies is some amount of certainty about their future, barring, of course, that they continue to act professionally and not, not, not behave like maniacs and, you know, but ideally sell. If you look back at the comic industry in the 70s and the 80s, and you talk to several of those people, there was a, a, a whether, whether honest or not honest, there was a feeling like they had more of a long-term career. Like, hey, if I'm Larry Hama, I have a pretty good idea that I'm going to be doing comics a year from now, probably for the same company. I feel pretty confident in that. If you talk to creators today, they have no idea. Absolutely no idea. In fact, the only way that they think they can establish that kind of long-term uh, career or viability is by basically, you know, blackmailing their way. Like, I've got some dirt on CB, so they're not going to get rid of me. Like, that, that's a terrible way to establish a long-term career. So if we want to make life better for people in comics, I think we have to show them a future. If we're going to show them a future, we have to have a more stable business. Do you see where all this is going? You, it all works backwards. We're going to have to have more forward-looking insight into the fact that our company is going to be, you know, stable, that we'll be able to afford people, that we're going to continue to make books, that we're not going to make a short-term, a bunch of short-term plans around, you know, books being randomly canceled and all this. It, it all comes back to if you can create a system where you understand the, the longer term, then you're going to create a better environment for workers. So we come back to this, uh, this union. Uh, a lot of what is being, you know, was being asked for, for our image, uh, either doesn't address that or does kind of the opposite. When people say we want more transparency around contracts and other things, pay, hey, okay. I mean, that's nice. Uh, but when you're 12 people for a publisher that mainly relies on, you know, work being brought in from outside, you have a very relatively small internal operation, um, that transparency really doesn't matter that much. I mean, the, the funny thing is, of the 12 or so people in this office, there's a good chance these people have already gone out drinking, shared their salaries. They, I, I think they, they've probably already been about as transparent as, as they're going to get already, just on their own, talking amongst themselves over drinks. So you get some of the other items on the list. You know, we want I, the one that, that's got everybody. Uh, really kind of keyed up is this, we want the ability to be able to, you know, unilaterally vote out problematic creators and work. The challenge with that is not only does that uh, not address long-term viability, it actually does the opposite. That basically puts a cloud over comics to say, hey, at any time, based on reasons, you know, the, the court of public opinion, we could cancel your book. That's the exact opposite of providing long-term planning. That's actually providing shorter-term planning. That's, that's basically telling people you do not even have the confidence of you know, keeping the work you've got. Even if you sign an agreement, we could boot you out in 30, 60 days. We could cancel limited series right in the middle. That's not going to make the creators feel more stable. And frankly, that's not going to make the people at Image feel more stable either. I mean, here's the. let me just play this out for you. Let's say one of the top-selling books that Image has got is Spawn. Todd McFarlane's doing this Spawn, Spawn universe, right? Okay, now let's say Todd McFarlane decides to uh, do NFTs, which he has done. Well, based on the, uh, the criteria of uh, this, this Image Union Clause, making NFTs, even getting involved in that business, could trigger a vote. It could trigger people say, saying, like, we don't want to work with somebody who you know, disregards the environment. 
it, it absolutely fits in that. I mean, you, you could make that argument. So you can have, uh, you know, 10 people basically vote to cancel Spawn and everything Todd McFarlane does. This is an extreme example, but you could do it. And if they've done that, then what they've done in effect is not only give less long-term stability to the people who work in Spawn. I mean, Todd McFarlane's rich. He's going to be fine. But the other people who work on that title, they, they, they've got that rug yanked out from under them. And they've hurt their own company because now they've taken away a, you know, some pretty decent money that comes into Image. What if Brian K. Vaughn is revealed to be a sex pest? It could happen. And uh, you know, two months into Saga returning, it's decided, oh, we can't keep publishing this. He's, he, he, it's a problem. It basically sets up that either you're going to have to eat your own words and let this work go through because it happens to be financially profitable for the company and holding it up to do it, or we're going to further make everything short-term, take away that long-term confidence in what's going on. I, it, this, is, this, this is dangerous. Again, I'm, I'm trying to lay out how I think about things. If you want to have healthier, more confident, more better paid, more secure creators, you want to have a more stable comic industry that's happier and better to work in, you have to provide more long-term planning. And if you're right now thinking about writing a comment of like, ah, the comic industry is screwed. There's no way to have long-term planning. No, of course there's a way to have long-term planning. You're talking about billion-dollar IP properties here. You can easily turn this ship around. It's not going to take forever. It's not something that is impossible to do. It's very easy. You, you actually have a bizarre situation where you've got two mega corporations, one of which the largest entertainment corporation in the world, that provides the people who work for it probably the least amount of job security and long-term visibility of any company in the, well, not any, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but really bad job security. If you can do that, if you can give people a better sense of what's going on, again, if the work sucks, if the comics don't sell, if the person goes out and is a maniac, they, sh they obviously should not continue to be employed. But the structure isn't even there for the people who are doing a good job. Whether you're doing a bad job or a good job, you've got no long-term security in comics. That's what needs to be addressed. My opinion, anyway. Um, I, I definitely think that those changes need to occur. I think that they're, those they're, their workers are taken for granted. I do think that independent contractor agreements are, are BS through these companies. I think that they're used to you know, negotiate down page rates into absurd levels. I think that there's a lot of artists out there who are being asked to, you know, move down from $250 a page to $150 a page, which is garbage. I think that there's a system where royalties are paid out basically when somebody at the publisher remembers to do it as opposed to a scheduled, planned, you know, thoughtful way. I think there's major problems that need major adjustments in comics. Absolutely. I just, I haven't seen a proposal put on the table yet that addresses that. The proposals thus far, the ones we've seen like with the Image Union, arguably I think they do the opposite. I think they create more instability, more insecurity, and less visibility into the future. And I think all that's going to do is hurt workers. It's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.